Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today I will discuss uh, patterns of inheritance. As you all know genetics deals with the science of heredity or how we transmit uh, traits or phenotypes or diseases or the characters from parent to the offspring. Over the next 30 minutes I will discuss the classical Mendelian inheritance which includes autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive and X-linked inheritance and non-traditional inheritance patterns like genomic imprinting, uniparental lysomy, triplet repeat disorders, mitochondrial inheritance, mosaism and oligogenic inheritance and slowly I will briefly touch upon polygenic inheritance and multifactorial inheritance. This slide shows the summary of what we know about uh, inheritance of various uh, characters or the phenotypes and how genes play a role in the uh, manifestation or inheritance of these traits. To begin with let us discuss Mendelian inheritance. These patterns are typically 4 or 5 I will discuss them later. Patterns of inheritance originally attributed or described by uh, Gregor Mendel and it is named after him which shows simple uh, single gene inheritance where traits are determined by, in, determined by single genes of large effect. That I, uh, means to say that a change in a particular gene has a phenotypic manifestation that is the meaning of traits determined by single genes of large influence. This is also called single gene inheritance or monogenic inheritance. As you know genes are located on our 46 chromosomes we have 23 pairs, 22 pairs of autosomes and a pair of sex chromosomes and the genes can be located in any of them deciding or determining whether it is autosomal character or a sex linked character. As of today over 5200 traits are described in online inheritance in man or omim we say in the data uh, database and it is increasing every day. Before I talk about uh, autosomal or X-linked inheritance, I would like to describe few terms for you here. Locus means the site of a gene on a chromosome. We have a nearly 18 to 19,000 genes and all of them are located or arranged in a systematic manner from chromosome 1 to 22 and then X and Y. So, this is site of a gene on a chromosome is called locus and the forms, alternative form of a gene found at the same locus on homologous chromosome. We have a pair of chromosomes for every chromosome like chromosome 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, there we have two alleles for each locus that tell that these two forms are called alleles. For an individual in a particular given locus we have two alleles. So, when I say phenotype it means the outward expression of a gene, the manifestation, the phenotypic, ex, uh, the outward expression of a particular genetic change or genetic uh, gene is called phenotype. It is actually the manifestation of the disease or manifestation of a trait it may be height, weight or a disease. So, that is called phenotype. So, we now know what is a locus it is the location of a, a gene on a chromosome allele are the alternative forms. In an individual there are two alleles, but in the population there may be several alleles in the particular given locus and phenotype is the outward expression of the gene or the manifestation of the gene. If we see uh, what is meant by dominance, we s it is defined as a dominant phenotype is defined as something which is expressed when, when only one chromosome of a pair carries the mutant allele or in heterozygous the there is a manifestation that is called dominant. We also say it, when one mutation is sufficient to cause the phenotype it is called a dominant phenotype it does not matter whether there are second there is a second mutation in the another allele that is dominant. In recessive phenotype 
the phenotype is manifested or expressed when both copies are mutated either in homozygous state or compound heterozygous state. Homozygous means we have same uh, mutant allele on both the chromosomes, compound heterozygous means two different alleles on in the same gene in the given locus we will describe this further in this state the phenotype manifests. So, if we have two different alleles at a locus A and B are the two different alleles if phenotypic manifestation is because of gene A or allele A then we say A is dominant to B if phenotype is due to B then we say B is dominant to A if we see both A and B contribute to the phenotype then we say they are co-dominant. The best example comes from blood group where we have A B blood groups. Let us examine this pedigree uh, just uh, to introduce you the concept of pedigree we write the family tree in the form of circles and squares circles for females squares for men or boys and when we highlight some square or circle it means the person has a disease. So, if you see this pedigree you see in each generation there is an affected individual and an affected individual has an affected parent either father or mother and we see both father and uh, both men and women or males and females are affected. So, three things we see here both sex, genders are uh, affected there is one affected parent and it is transmitted from generation to generation these three features define what is meant by autosomal dominant inheritance. Phenotype is seen in every generation affected person has an affected parent it is also called vertical transmission from parent to offspring to grand uh, child both genders are affected and they transmit the disease to both sex. Then we have examples like common diseases like neurofibromatosis, achondroplasia, familial hypercholesterolemia and so on which are commonly called uh, known to get inherited in autosomal dominant fashion. How do uh, the diseases manifest when it is autosomal dominant disease as I have told earlier a heterozygote where one allele is normal the other allele is mutant or pathogenic variant that is sufficient to cause the disease. Some, some of the patients or some of the diseases manifest because the quantity of the protein or the functional product produced by the gene is half because one allele is non-functional that we call haplo insufficiency. If the product is 50 percent of the normal that is not sufficient to maintain the normal homeostasis then we call it haplo insufficiency and diseases can manifest. Sometimes the mutant allele is abnormal it interferes with functioning of normal allele as we see in osteogenesis imperfecta we call it dominant negative effect. There may be excessive normal function by some mutations as we see in uh, fibroblast uh, growth factor receptor uh, mutations in achondroplasia which is abnormal gain of normal function. So, the few epiphysis fuse early and it results in short stretcher. So, these are few important mechanisms how an autosomal dominant diseases can happen because of a heterozygous pathogenic variation in a particular gene. It we follow uh, these diseases do not follow books or we have several exceptions to the simple concept of autosomal dominant inheritance as we see here you can see men and women are affected each generation if is affected, but there is a lady who is indicated by an arrow who does not have the disease, but she has passed it on to the offspring. So, there is somebody who has the genetic variant, but does not have the disease. So, this phenomenon is called reduced penetrance, Penet this lady is non penetrant. To define this penetrance is defined as the probability that a gene will have any phenotypic expression at all it is an all or none concept the person has the disease or does not have the disease irrespective of the severity of the manifestation. It is also called skipping a generation some person does not have the disease which is not typical for common autosomal dominant conditions oh, sorry I meant uh, which uh, this is an exception to the rule where each affected individual should have an affected parent. Statistically it is defined as a percentage of the people 
with a particular phenotype who are actually affected at least to some degree. If we say penetrance is 80 percent out of 100 individuals who carry the pathogenic variant only 80 percent of them have disease at least to some degree that is the meaning of penetrance. Let us see this pedigree which is an autosomal dominant condition known as uh, Huntington disease. You can I have written the age of manifestation of the or age of onset of the diseases for affected individuals. You can see here the grandfather has disease onset at 50, somebody has uh, at 38, somebody has 43, uh, somebody at 34. You can see as you see the generations it occurs early the younger people are affected in subsequent generations. This is called age dependent penetrance or also known as anticipation. This occurs with the autosomal dominant triplet repeat disorders, I will be touching uh, upon triplet repeat disorders later. So, this is if you see some person at young age he may not have the disease it occurs later. So, this is we might label him as non penetrant. But what is actually happening is they will have the disease later and initially they will be appearing healthy. So, this phenomenon is called anticipation. I have drawn a pedigree of uh, family with the tuberous sclerosis a common neurology neurocutaneous disorder where we have multiple skin lesions there may be intellectual disability I have written here somebody has seizures, somebody has chagrin patch on the skin, somebody has mild mental retardation or intellectual disability, somebody has severe adenoma sebaceum which are some small lesions around the nose usually and somebody have uh, someone might have all the three manifestations of the disease. So, you see variable severity of the disease in the same family we all know all the family members who are affected have the same pathogenic variant or same mutation, but they have different manifestation. This phenomenon is also quite common and we call it variable expressivity. So, it refers to the severity of the expression of the phenotype and the severity of the disease differs in people who have the same genotype or same mutation. This is also a phenomenon that is observed in Mendelian disorders. Now, let us go to the next uh, pedigree you can see here in one generation only two members a male and a female are affected, but there is no family history parents are healthy, grandparents are healthy, there in even in remote relatives there is no disease, but in a sib sheep or in a one generation you see affected individuals. Parents may be consanguineous, consanguinity refers to marriage between two blood relatives or two related individuals, this may or may not be seen. So, this kind of pedigree where you see one generation being affected, parents being healthy usually they are called carriers is called autosomal recessive inheritance. So, here males and females are equally likely to be affected, parents of an affected child are asymptomatic carriers they do not have the disease manifestations. Consanguinity may be present especially if the disease is very rare. See thalassemia in India is very common and we may not see consanguinity, but if we see some rare diseases like osteopetrosis then there may be consanguinity which precipitates this kind of diseases. This is also called horizontal transmission because only one generation is affected. As in autosomal dominant inheritance if the parent is affected there are two alleles the risk of recurrence is 50 percent here it is 25 percent because parents are carriers carriers do not have any clinical manifestations and only when the child is homozygous or compound heterozygous the disease manifests. Most of them are metabolic disease because haploinsufficiency here does not cause the disease it is, it is actually total absence of the protein or totally non functioning protein product. So, we get metabolic diseases which are caused by deficiency of enzymes, enzymes as you know are catalysts and they catalyze the reaction and they are never used up in the chemical reaction they are available for subsequent metabolism of the substrate. So, usually we require very small quantities of the enzymes. Uh, certain ethnic groups like Ashkenazi Jews or uh, people from hilly areas like Biligiri Rangan Betta uh, they have specific diseases if it is sickle cell disease in Biligiri Rangan Betta, Gaussian disease, uh, then uh, Canavan's disease, Tay-Sachs disease in Ashkenazi Jews. 
several examples like phenylketonuria, Wilson disease, ataxia, telangiectasia, thalassemia, cystic fibrosis, these are the common examples for autosomal recessive inheritance. I would like to show you few things here. Consanguinity may or may not be present, but we need to know that if in this pedigree both husband and wife, the man and the woman, they are affected with deafness, but none and that means they have two alleles each, they are either homozygous or compound heterozygous, they should transmit always one mutation to the offspring, both of them, but none of the children are affected. So, how can this happen? If we see deafness, it is genetically heterogeneous. What I have written the carrier status for two different genes here, actually in one family, the gene is different and in the second family, the gene is different and children are never homozygous or compound heterozygous for the mutation in the same gene, but they are also they are double heterozygous. They have carrier status for two different genes or two different mutations. So, there is one normal allele for both the genes always. This phenomenon is called locus heterogeneity and the person who has mutation in two genes, both if in homozygous or compound heterozygous uh, state cause disease, here it is two different genes, two different mutations and they are called double heterozygotes and they are healthy. More than one gene causing the same phenotype or th this is these are also called phen genocopies. We have several genes connexin 26 or connexin 30 or uh, syndromes which cause Usher, uh, the genes which cause Usher syndrome, they all can cause or Wardenberg syndrome, they can all cause deafness, isolated deafness or non syndromic deafness. And if two patients, two individuals with deafness due to different genetic variants marry their children are likely to be normal. This is what we need to know when we counsel for such diseases and establishing a molecular genetics helps us to uh, counsel them better and in a, uh, uh, and we are enabled to give exact risk of recurrence of the condition. I will show you a different uh, situation now. The mutations can be different in a single gene. I have just highlighted these are not the typical pedigrees that we write just to show you one man has a mutation, women has a different mutation, but both of them are in the beta globin gene and child has two mutations in the same gene, same locus that means child will be affected with beta thalassemia major or beta thalassemia intermedia and this situation is called compound heterozygote and it is called mutational heterogeneity or also called allelic heterogeneity. Alleles are different, but in the same gene and the individual this is a usual situation in uh, uh, Europe or America where consanguinity is rare the recessive diseases manifest in compound heterozygous state. Whereas, in India or Gulf countries where consanguinity is practiced more frequently or there is a common ancestor, we get uh, homozygous mutations in autosomal recessive disorders. Let us examine this pedigree now. You can see here only males are affected, females are never affected right. And you see two affected men are related through a female who has probably transmitted the variation in the particular gene which is as you now know it is X. So, this is an example of X linked inheritance where males are affected, two affected males are related through a carrier female who transmit the, transmits the uh, pathogenic variant or mutation or the gene and females are usually not affected. Now, I have highlighted carriers here, usually we do not uh, recognize carrier status by clinical examination, it requires genetic testing or there are two male relatives who are connected through a female, we know they are obligate carriers, they have to be carriers if they have transmitted the X chromosome to the from one man to the other uh, offspring. Now, there is no male to male, tra male transmission because men do not give their X chromosomes to their sons, they give their Y chromosomes. And the risk of recurrence here is 25 percent in if you consider all children, but if for 20, 50 percent of the boys and uh, are affected and 50 percent of the daughters are carriers in an X linked inheritance pattern. 
Affected individuals are related through transmitting or carrier females, it is also called oblique transmission. A significant proportion of uh, isolated cases are due to new mutations. This is true for even autosomal dominant conditions. When you see parents are unaffected in a dominant situation, it is likely to be new mutation or reduced penetrance. Even in X linked or autosomal dominant condition, when the condition is lethal, it is many of them occur because of de novo or new mutations. And to give examples, we have hemophilia A, hemophilia B, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and Hunter's disease. These are the common X linked uh, recessive conditions. Rare, I have said rare uh, men are affected, females are spared, but rarely females can be affected if an affected male has a daughter from a carrier female. So, male passes on the X chromosome with the mutation, females can pass it on to 50 percent of her daughters, then females are homozygous. This can happen in haemophilia where a man marries his uh, cousin or somebody who is a carrier or in a situation where we call skewed X inactivation, we are naturally supposed to have random X, X inactivation that is 50 percent of the X's are inactivated randomly in all cells of the body in a female. But if it is only preferentially one X is inactivated, most of the cells carry an uh, X chromosome which has a mutation which is active that the normal uh, allele is normal X chromosome is inactive, then we can get manifestation. Turner syndrome as you know have only one X, females have only one X chromosome, so they can have the manifestation. Rarely an X and autosomal translocation can affect uh, the uh, gene and then can have manifestation in a female. So, rarely they are affected. You see the this pedigree, you see all generations are affected, both men and women are affected. We here we see no male to male transmission in if you see the traditional autosomal dominant men can pass it on to the boys or their sons, but here you see men do not transmit the disease to the sons, but they transmit the disease to the daughters. So, if you see male to male transmission it is autosomal dominant condition if you do not see it can be either autosomal dominant or X linked dominant. This is typical X linked dominant inheritance, looks like autosomal dominant, more females are usually affected, but usually females have two X chromosomes and might have milder phenotype. There is no male to male transmission. Examples include hypophosphatemic rickets, Rett syndrome, and Icard syndrome. I would like to tell the current concept is X linked inheritance we do not uh, differentiate between X linked dominant or X linked recessive. If you see X linked inheritance, there is a spectrum where um, uh, females are not affected or females are mild, moderate or severely affected and in some situation there are no affected females, all are affected men and in some situations milder manifestation or even serious manifestation without sex differentiation can occur. So, we call it uh, X linked inheritance when it is a spectrum at one end only females are affected at end at the other end females are also affected or so the, uh, we if you see the recent books you may not see this uh, classification because we now have better understanding of X linked inheritance, but this is traditional approach how we call this is X linked dominant or X linked recessive condition. Now, over next uh, few slides, I will discuss uh, non-traditional inheritance patterns which include uh, genomic imprinting, uniparental disomy, triplet repeat disorders, mitochondrial diseases, mosaism, oligogenic disorders. When we say non-traditional, we also call it non-Mendelian inheritance. They do not follow typical Mendelian inheritance patterns as we have discussed till now. I will give you some examples here. Uniparental disomy means inheritance of both homologs from the same parent. Usually, we have one parent, one chromosome from the father, the other from the mother, but if both chromosomes or segments come from one parent, that is called uniparental disomy. If it is from the same grandparent, it is called uniparental isodisomy. If it is from the diff two different grandparents, it is called uniparental heterodisomy. How do they cause disease 
is probably because we have some imprinted genes where I will discuss further a parent of origin has an influence on the expression of the disease or sometimes it is autosomal recessive condition there is a mutation or there is a pathogenic variant which happens to uh, in both the copies of the gene because it is inherited from the same parent then we have autosomal recessive conditions manifesting where only one parent is carrier the other one is wild type or not a carrier but it, the parent who carries the mutation has given both the copies of the same gene to the offspring and does not have a the offspring does not have a normal copy from one of the parents then they can have a an autosomal recessive disease. Genomic imprinting refers to the dependence of a phenotype on parent of origin differences in the gene expression. So, in general all the genes should have norm function normally whether the genes are derived from father or mother, but there are certain loci, certain locations on the entire genome where a parent of origin matters. This is usually because of there are some imprinted genes which are usually modified by methylation which makes the gene inactive depending on whether it is inherited from father or mother. I some examples include uh, Prader-Willi syndrome, Engelmann syndrome, Beckwith-Widman syndrome. So, these are the common conditions where we see genomic imprinting these are called imprinted uh, genes which are usually inactive. I will not go in much into the details for the uh, sake of presenting all modes of inheritance uh, today in 30 minutes. And we have next class of disorders triplet repeat disorders most of them are autosomal dominant there are few autosomal recessive conditions as we see in Frederick's ataxia. Triplet repeat means trinucleotide repeats CGG or CAG these three nucleotides repeat again and again several times it can be within the exon or within the intron it may lead to loss of function or gain of function of the gene and from generation to generation there may be expansion or rarely reduction. So, as we have seen we could see anticipation in Huntington's chorea or spinocerebellar ataxia I have few examples here you can see fragile X syndrome or fragile X mental retardation, spinobulbar muscular atrophy, uh, myotonic dystrophy, Huntington disease, this spinocerebellar ataxias these are the common examples for triplet repeat disorders and most of them are autosomal dominant, fragile X is X linked, Frederick's ataxia is autosomal recessive. This is unique type of mutation or pathogenic variation which causes disease. Mitochondria are inherited from the mother and they show a typical pattern of inheritance. They we, sperm does not carry mitochondria it is usually it is the ovum which gives the mitochondria to the offspring and mitochondria can have normal mitochondrial population and pay, uh, uh, mitochondria with the mutations and when the load of mitochondria with mutation crosses a threshold we get the disease because the disease uh, the mutant load can vary from tissue to tissue person to person we see very highly variable expression of the disease some may be mild some may be severe and there is something called bottleneck hypothesis where during gametogenesis a small fraction of mitochondria may be selected which then expand and give rise to the all mitochondria of the individual. The, we have several uh, diseases like Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy, Mela's, Murph and Lay syndrome where we get mutations in the mitochondrial genome as compared to the nuclear genome which we have discussed in the form of autosomal dominant recessive and X linked inheritance patterns. As I have said earlier mother gives mitochondria to the children and all children get mitochondria with the mutations and men do not transmit to the offspring all children of affected males will not inherit the disease all children of affected females will inherit it. But remember variation is expression of uh, variable expression is quite common and several tissues are affected as you know mitochondria are present in several uh, for, uh, mitochondria is present in several highly energy dependent tissues. Mosaism refers to presence of two or more distinct cell lines in an individual uh, derived from the same uh, zygote it can be somatic where we see in the different tissues or different organs of the body or germline where it is present in 
gonads as well. The significance is if it is somatic there in the, in one tissue there may be some cells with mutations, some cells without mutations and there can be a mosaic pattern of presentation there it can be skin pigmentation abnormality, vascular abnormality, syndactyly and differential growth in uh, one side or even region wise because some are normal, some are abnormal, but if it happens in gonads then some children may be normal, some children may be abnormal even if the person is unaffected because the somatic cells do not carry much of the mutant load there is a risk of recurrence of the condition in the next offspring. When we move on to next level of uh, next uh, concept of inheritance from mono monogenic or single gene we have something called digenic or oligogenic. Monogenic disorders or Mendelian disorders are diseases which occur because of the variants in a gene which has a very large influence. If the influence of the gene is lesser and requires a phenotype requires action of two genes or mutations in two or three genes we call them digenic or oligogenic inheritance. Bardet Biddle syndrome is one of such diseases where mutation in one of the six now they, there are more genes or it is also called triallelic inheritance. There are three mutations are required in two at least two genes for the causation of the disease. So, these are more than one genes again this is not as large as monogenic in, uh, in influence of the particular variant on the phenotype it is slightly lesser, but two or three are sufficient to cause the disease as compared to the polygenic inheritance where we see many loci with small contributing effects some are additive some uh, negate the impact or uh, the influence of the, on the phenotype of the other uh, loci or other mutation multiple factors usually genetic when we say polygenic, but in practice we see something called multifactorial where there is environmental influence purely polygenic inheritance is probably not very well defined because we have several environmental factors contributing to the phenotype. So, when I say multifactorial inheritance it means simultaneous action of multiple genetic factors and environmental uh, factors all of them add or reduce the effect of the other factor may be genetic or environmental. We have several such examples here congenital malformations in children like left lip palate, congenital hip dislocation, congenital heart disease, neural tube defect which are very common or pyloric stenosis or club feet and adult onset diseases like diabetes mellitus, epilepsy, glaucoma, hypertension, ischemic heart disease, manic depression, schizophrenia. So, we see malformations and adult onset diseases which are very common these are all examples where we see familial aggregation influence of few or several genes, but it is not too many, but there are plenty of genes which influence the phenotype and there are several environmental factor it may be diet, uh, a, an infectious agent or food style or uh, lifestyle or habits which determine the onset and as well as the severity of the phenotype. What we have done or just to summarize the different patterns of inheritance or if you look into any disease that is written in our textbooks or we see, we see in patients they can all be conceptualized or put together like this at one end we have purely genetic what we call monogenic diseases like Duchenne muscular dystrophy, phenylketonuria, galactosemia, osteogenesis imperfecta, hemophilia. I do not say that all of them have the same uh, phenotype there may be intrafamilial, interfamilial variations between this and some uh, phenotype may be determined by the environment, but the influence of gene is very high here as compared to tuberculosis or nutritional deficiencies like scurvy when I say tuberculosis we now know there are several genetic factors which determine the susceptibility to tuberculosis, but mostly it is the infectious agent uh, which is responsible for the causation of the disease in a particular uh, given uh, host environment, but in between we have club feet, pyloric stenosis, hip dislocations, congenital hip dislocation I mean 
diabetes, peptic ulcer, spina bifida, ischemic heart disease, ankling spondylitis, where these diseases are common and it is complex genetics, multifactorial and they have very low risk of recurrence as compared to the simple traditional Mendelian or simple single gene inheritance which are unifactorial and the risk of recurrence is very high. This slide summarizes a pure, uh, it is only in the literary sense genetic disease from the pure environmental disease and in between are the common complex multifactorial diseases. Thank you.